net making knots. Hello everybody, welcome back. And in today's little exercise, what I thought I'd show you um, what I do is I'm gonna show you the two knots that I personally use when net making. And the reason for that is um, there have been a couple of questions as to why I use the two different knots. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the two different knots that I use and show you the problems that I encountered with these particular knots. Um, and the other thing is, yes, there are more ways of tying knots in nets than, <laughs> try saying that, knots in nets, than I'm actually demonstrating here. But because I've done two videos so far using two different um, variants of the knot, what I would do is I would show you a close up and show you why some people have written in the comments that when they do one particular knot, they've gone wrong. And so what I wanna do is on large cordage here is actually show you the actual knot itself so that you can see what's going wrong when you actually tie it. And what I will do is I should hopefully about now put a clip in from my other video showing this first knot being made and then we'll go on to the next knot. And then what I do is I go underneath the card, pick up the first loop. So if we just pull that to one side, you can see the first loop that we come to is that one there. And all I do is go up through that first loop and exactly the same as we did in the beginning, we bring it so that the loop butts up hard against my netting, uh, my net gauge. I then pinch it, throw a loop over my hand like so go underneath, pick up the first two that form the loop, go over the left hand one of that, and then pull it through, and then pull the knot down tight and locks it into place. So as you can see from that um, first little clip from one of the nets that I did, and I'll put a link in below to those particular nets, um, you can see that what I actually did was I tied a sheet bend into my line. So here is my, one of my loops coming down and here's my, <laughs> yeah, loaded netting needle, but we're, I'm gonna take the netting needle off so it's, it's not so confusing, but just imagine that this green end here is my, this is a beautiful netting needle. I love this one. It's obviously been used hundreds of times by somebody somewhere and it really is a beautiful, beautiful item. Just look on eBay. You can get them on eBay. Right, so we have our line here and the first thing that I do with my line is to create my actual sheet bend or one of the loops on my net is that I take the needle and pass it underneath so that it goes through the V of our top loop. Then once I've done that, I pull enough through. We want to pull a fair amount through and I've pulled a fair amount through and it's going off to the right hand side here. The next thing I do is you'll notice that when I'm actually doing it, I throw the loop over the back of my hand. So my hand is here now and I throw the loop over the back of the hand. And then the next thing I do is with my netting needle, I go down underneath both the red ones and then once I've gone underneath the, both the red ones I bring it up through that loop on the back of my hand and then just gently pull through and you can see here now what we've done is we have tied our first loop into our line and if I pull it up really tight you can see that it actually locks into place and we've actually tied a sheet bend. It's plain and simple, as easy as that. We've tied a sheet bend and then what we would do then is with this end, go up to the next loop and do exactly the same again so that we're tying sheet bends all the way along our meshes. Now the thing is, also with this, it doesn't look very good because it doesn't pull down very tight, but if you're using a fine line, that will pull down nice and tight. Now, this is where we get onto the point of some people are saying, but John, when I tie this, 
it's not right. My net is awful. And probably the reason is this. So let's tie this again. So I'll undo this now. And we'll tie this again. So here we go. We've got our first row of meshes running across the top here. We want to add another mesh. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my netting needle with my line attached and pass my line up through that piece there, exactly the same as before, pull it through, we want, we want a fair bit through, and then once I've done that, I then throw it over the back of my hand, so you can see here now, just let's bring that into view, over the back of my hand I've got a loop that's then, bring that into view a bit, going off to my right hand side, to my netting needle. I then pass my netting needle underneath the two red ones and up through the middle of that loop that I created on the back of my hand. So let's just bring that down there a bit more. And so you can see now here, I am coming up through that loop. Now, when you're using fine cordage, this is the problem. What you have to do, and this is really important, is you have to basically hold on to, let's put that out the way, hold on to that red one and prevent the yellow line from slipping. Because watch what happens is, now I'm going to exaggerate this, but if I accidentally allow that yellow line to slip, my knot ties underneath. And you can see here now, where it's tied underneath, it's been allowed to slip down and tied underneath, I have now got a slip knot formed and so I've not secured my net. And if I pull that up tight, you can see there we've got a slip knot has appeared at the bottom of our loop. And so that is wrong. Therefore, that's why some people are saying, but when I tie it, it's, it's wrong. They don't know why, but it's wrong. And that's the reason. So let's just show you that again. So to tie this properly, let's take that out completely. And let's start again. So here we go. There is my loop. I want to put another row of meshes on. So I take my netting needle up through the loop, take a bit through there, and then form a loop over the back of my hand. And then there's my working end on the right hand side. And so what you're doing now is you are passing your netting needle under the red, under the red, up through the loop. But as you're passing it up through the loop, what you want to do is at the point, let's get that out of the way, at the point where the red and the yellow are meeting, pinch it. Pinch it tight. And it's hard to do when you've got very fine mesh, but you will feel it. Pinch it tight and gradually, as you pull it through, what you're doing is you're forcing the knot itself to form above the bite there of the red one. And that's what you're looking for. And then now when I pull down hard on that, it's all locking into place. And you can see there now that is really, really tight. It's not coming undone. There is no swing, no movement, because what we've done is we've tied a sheet bend at the top rather than a slip knot at the bottom. And so this, to be honest, this was the first netting knot that I learned. And I made nets and my nets were awful. And the reason they were awful was because a lot of times, let's just misform this knot, I ended up with that. So my net was swinging about and it was absolutely loose and horrible. And that is the reason. And this is where the second method of tying a different knot came about. And this one was taught to me by a guy called um, Dave Warlow, a um, bit of a flat capper. He, he makes um, purse nets for um, rabbit hunting, things like that. And so this is how I learned another knot. You'll feel when it's tight on there, it's not slipping any further. And now that I've done that, what I do is I pass this over the back of my hand like so, I've formed a loop there, and then I go round the back of the two 
of the loops. So you can see I've gone round the back there. That's my actual loop there that I've picked up where my cordage runs through. And I've gone round the back of the two loops and passed my netting needle through like so. And then once I've passed it through like so, I then go between those two loops that I've picked up on my first loop there. Oh, got a slight catch there. And then what I do is I just pull up nice and tight. And there we have it. I have my first loop that's been picked up. And so what we do is we've got our mesh here now. So there's one of the, there's a V of our mesh. Netting needle, but we're going to dispense with the netting needle. And what we do this time is this. I pass my end of my netting needle up here and then I pull a fair bit through until I get the right amount of mesh forming at the bottom here. So that would look something like that. Okay, so the next thing I do is exactly the same as the previous one. I throw a loop over the back of my hand. So there we go. Let's just tighten that up a bit. So there's a loop going over my hand and then down to the working end on the right hand side. Now this time, what I do is I take this working end here. I pass it underneath both as we did before and pull. OK, but we now do another tuck and then what I do is I take that working end again and then this time just go underneath the red one there and bring it up on the right hand side there and pull it through. And this isn't very slippery, but as you can see here now, what's happening is we are forming a better knot above. And the simple fact is, it's a slightly bulkier knot, but the simple fact is that this particular knot now, it has less of a tendency to slip. So the yellow line has less of a tendency to slip underneath the red one. And therefore, we're actually creating a knot that locks it in place above the bite of the red one. And I'll show you this again. And someone did actually ask me, he says, he says, John, he says, you're netting wrong. It's, you're wasting time putting two loops in there. But the simple reason is that the reason I put two in there is simply for the fact is that when I first started knotting, it was easier to do that than try and fiddle my fingers. And I couldn't get it right for ages. I was struggling to get it right. And I couldn't get this particular knot right. So I went on to the second method and the second method worked and worked all the time. And also the other thing is the knot itself felt more secure. Whether it is or not, yeah, it probably is. But for netting, if you do it right in the first method that I showed you, fine. So here we go, let's do the second method again. So what we do is we get our netting needle, we pass it up through the bottom of our red mesh and then take a fair bit through fair bit through like that and then what we do now is we pass it over the back of our hand so as you can see now let's just shrink that down a bit over the back of our hand and then we take that working end and we pass it underneath red underneath red up through that loop that we created over the back of our hand then we take it over everything bring it up through between the two reds this time. Yes, yeah, one step more when net making and then pull up. And then as I pull up, as you can see, it's all pulling through nicely. But the thing is, everything is forming nicely above the bite of our red one so that when, you know, I can be very, very slack in the actual tying of this. But when I tie it, as you can see, I have got a nice knot formed at this point here and so this knot is very difficult i've never done it when tying it this method i've never done it so it ends up the wrong way okay providing you follow those steps that is how you do this particular knot and that's the reason why i do the second which has one extra tuck which takes oh all of a fraction of a second a bit longer which some people seem to object to but if you are net making 
Start off with this knot, then go on to the simpler knot once you know exactly what you're doing. And to be honest, practice this with some larger rope so that you can actually see exactly and feel what's happening and then you can reduce it down onto a smaller sized um, mesh. Okay, so once again, end of video. Quick and simple little tutorial this one on my two different netting knots. These are the ones that I always use when I'm making my purse nets or my fishing nets. And so once again, if you enjoyed it, if you hated it, you know the routine by now. And also, if you, okay, what I'm really interested in is if you know other netting knots, tell me about them in the comments below because I love to learn all sorts of new knots. So once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.